Okay, I have got a uh, half an hour until I make my uh, claim. So I think I have enough time to uh, talk about something else. Uh, yeah, look at this. This is the production cost curve for oil. You know, oh shit, we don't need to see that even. This is what we want. This is this is what we want. If we want to analyze the price of oil, but you know, so it shows the the, the, the accumulated uh, accumulated supply and the cost of different things. This is probably well, hopefully it's a long run. Uh, production cost exactly what we computed uh, earlier. Instead of this, this wonderful teaching note, this teaching note said, "No, let's do some Monte Carlo simulation." What a bunch of nuts. How could this is supposedly a Harvard Business School? Isn't that a good university? And they're telling you that the price of oil in this scenario is going to just be about two U.S. dollars in 2035. And then they're telling you the price of oil in this scenario is going to be, well, below 10. Oh, this one gets above 10. Nominal. Nominal U.S. dollars. And they had a, a, a implicit, pretty big implicit inflation in the, in the, in the risk free rate. Oh, look at this. We've got a couple scenarios where it gets up to 20. What a lot of rubbish. And then one or two scenarios. We got one when it got up to 60. Oh, my gosh. You know, I mean, look at all this crap. And then they said, okay, we'll use this oil price and see what our, This is all the scenarios where we get negative NPV and positive NPV using the absurd discount rate. God. And then, the pr most preposterous thing of all is that the uh, probability of default, this is the DSCR on the bottom, and this is this, and they said, oh, we got to use at risk, oh, we got to use at risk. They used a 2.5% uh, increase in oil price and a volatility of 20% in oil price. It takes, let's see, if before I catch my plane, we can just replicate that. And, Hopefully it should be a whole lot less. And if we press, uh, oops, let's make a new sheet this time. Let's put a volatility. Now, I at one time was addicted to Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, increase somebody, oh, they, they had an increase. So, and they had a 2.5% increase, and let's see what their starting oil price was. I think they used 2.25. Asset beta. Look at this rubbish. Look at this rubbish. <laughs> God, asset beta. And what, what, there's this, this stuff where they, they talked about... Uh, Oh my god. Oh, deal of the year. Okay, great. Where's this crap where they... Look at this crap. Oof. I just want to show you something else. The cost of capital. When they got this, this crazy cost of capital of 20% or something, 21%. Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Complete rubbish. Sorry about that. Yeah, about that. Uh, so let's put a starting price. Okay, so this is just going to be our very first uh, little Monte Carlo simulation. So this was, I, I can't even remember, was this 12.5? That's just so hard to, to not account for the production costs on this and not use mean reversion and not put a minimum in there that reflects the short term uh, uh, production cost it's just the ultimate piece of rubbish sorry my daughter told me to be nicer Heidi told me to to, to 
a, a spice up these videos a little bit. She's just wonderful, as Heidi. Uh, uh, she, I don't know if she meant this really. She thought she said to make them interactive. So if you've got any comments, please. Well, well, somehow I'm going to make something interactive. I don't know how to do this. Okay, there's our stencil bars. Now we can make a time series equation. So this this project had uh, 35 years. So let's just go over here, and you know, it's there's 22. Do you see where I'm looking at the 22 right there? There's the 31, 35. Control R. Oops. Oh, E I S. Excuse me. Okay, and then if we put all press. Okay, let's do this without the. Uh, uh, I'm gonna name the ranges shift control three. Okay, and we can put in our base oil price. Maybe we should put that in this period. And then what we do is if we want a simulation, you don't have to buy at risk. How absurd to think you have to buy at risk to do this. Okay. We can uh, uh, say, okay, well, uh, uh, the formula for, for this is is P T. How do I make a little T? I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I put a capital P T equal P T minus one plus uh, P T minus one times the volatility uh, uh, okay times some random random number and this random number can be computed with a normal uh, uh, inverse and, uh, and, and, the, and I, I, I don't know uh, uh, and I and the okay, and we can put I and the that just gives you a number between zero and one, which is exactly what you want. If we press normal, uh, oh gosh, okay, excuse me, that's the last video that just got put it up. Uh, N O R M S standard universe. Okay, so if I press, I can't do this, right? I have to go to a formula. Calculate sheet. Every time I calculate, I get a number and it should average zero. Okay? Now, if we want to then make a time series equation, what we can do is can, so take the prior, prior one plus the prior one again times normal inverse times uh, uh, the volatility okay and I'm just using range okay so and then shift control how oh, does it work um, I guess it, it's a oh shit well, what happens here is you know, about that. So, what I should have done is, uh, I guess I can go to uh, develop it. No, no, it seems to work. Okay. Shift the So, oh god, what is this? Look for. Okay. This is taking longer than my stupid thing. Okay, that was embarrassing. I had a problem with my shift control R. That really sucked. Okay, now what you can do is is uh, just keep. Now, once you have that, now I suppose what they did is they said, okay, it's not really this. What we're going to take is take this one times one plus the the little bit of an increase. And uh, shift control R. So they, they apparently had to buy some stupidly expensive uh, program to do this. Yeah, that's fine. And they said, oh, I bought the add in. What a waste of money. What a total waste of money. 
So we can just compute that again and again. If we want to, uh, uh, we can just press Shift F down, Control D, and uh, we can. Uh, why don't we? Uh, okay. What happens if we press F11 here? And we change the chart type. Make it a line chart. Okay, we have one crazy scenario. <laughs> That's how crazy the scenario is. You know. Uh, let's press the. Uh, let's go to the. Uh, uh, data format rather let's I suppose we can do this one. Yeah. That looks kind of like the uh, does that one look like the scenarios they have? This one was too high. Oh that last one looked okay. This one kind of looks a little bit and that was too high. Let's keep going. I'm just pressing recalculate. And you know, okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stop. Okay, you don't need to see all of this. This one had a bunch of scenarios below ten. Okay, and uh, I'm going to uh, save this now. This is just the first. Uh, I have to go catch my plane, so this is only the first of a series of Monte Carlo simulations. Here's what I want you to remember about the Monte Carlo simulation. I think they can be interesting. I really do. But only if you incorporate some sensible economics into your into your analysis. So this had kind of the low uh, prices. And I'll put uh, oil uh, price simulations uh, without, without a mean reversion. Minimum, minimum, or consideration of production cost. The best is if you do it like this, like the Harvard case teaching like that, you've got an irrelevant pile of rubbish. Just you've got some random numbers that mean about nothing. Okay, and then we can we can do a little more with this, but uh, okay. I think that's okay. I chose the uh, prices that are under ten and all of that. Okay. Oh shit. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna stop the video. So I called because Bruce is.